New illegal drug strategy from Boris Johnson's government for the next 10 years covering England and Wales. We have first indications of it. We'll hear from the Commons and Kit Malthouse in just a second. Uh, we had from Sam a moment ago, who used to work in law enforcement, with some interesting thoughts on what he thinks is required, explaining more about how county lines, how county lines work. Uh, let me know what your take is. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Andy Cowan is from Anyone's Child. Andy, welcome to the program. How are you? I'm good, Eddie. How are you? I'm fine. Tell me about Anyone's Child. So Anyone's Child is uh, a group of people who are relatives of uh, people who have unfortunately uh, died um, or been severely affected, in many cases died as a result of uh, drug use. Uh, and I guess uh, it has two main elements. Uh, one is really uh, to sort of campaign for changes that the group believes had they been uh, in existence, their loved ones may not have suffered in the way that they did, and therefore, you know, we suffer accordingly. Um, but uh, but also, it's a group of of sharing. We get together and, and we talk about what happened. And I guess there's a there's a consolation in, in just being together. And the group is growing uh, because, unfortunately, uh, the problem continues to be a huge problem, and people continue to to die. You lost your son. Yes, I did. Daniel was uh, 29, uh, a very healthy. Uh, vigorous uh, young guy uh, with a great job, uh, a great future. Um, uh, he was a, the middle son of our three three children, um, and very much a family uh, guy. Uh, loved loved Christmas. He, he really loved Christmas. So this is a particularly uh, difficult time of year for us. But uh, just over five years ago, uh, he overdosed and, and died from uh, from uh, drugs. Yeah. What do you uh, know about uh, what happened to him when he got the drugs? So uh, he was effectively, uh, as we understand now, he, he never really talked about it, but clearly he, he was an occasional user of uh, recreational drugs. And, and by the way, for people who think that, that that isn't particularly common, the government's own figures show that there are over uh, about 3.2 3 million people uh, in England and Wales, 3.2 million uh, were users of recreational drugs uh, in the year 2020. Uh, so Daniel was one of many millions of people uh, who, n not, not, not necessarily addicts, but just people who are recreational drug users. Uh, he had a friend who acquired the drugs uh, on the, the internet. Uh, and of course, the problem is that drugs are freely and widely available to anybody who wants to buy them. I could buy them this evening if I wanted them, as could you, so could anybody. Uh, but the problem is that what Daniel uh, and his friends with a friend that evening, uh, what they effectively bought was uh, poison uh, because the drugs that they thought were ecstasy, uh, they, they found that there were, uh, I think it was fentanyl uh, as well as ecstasy uh, in, in the drug and that's what probably killed them. Effectively, fentanyl is an opioid of, of heroin. Uh, and so he, he took poison. And again, in 2020, something like 4,500 uh, drug users, were recreational drug users, were, were poisoned to death uh, as a result of the drugs that they, they took. And can I ask you, we had the reports at the weekend and today as to what's in this uh, strategy. And just in the past few minutes, we've heard from uh, Kit Malthouse in the comments. Have a listen to to this. And then I just want to get your thoughts on what you think of uh, what you've heard and what you think might be missing. Have a listen. I am pleased to tell the House that our strategy is accompanied by nearly £900 million of dedicated funding. This record level of investment will bring our total spending on drug enforcement, treatment and recovery to more than £3,000 million over the next three years. This is unprecedented and a clear signal of our commitment and that of the Prime Minister to addressing these challenges. Using this funding, we will mount a relentless and uncompromising campaign against the violent and exploitative illegal drug market. This will include further action to prevent drugs entering the country, the disruption of criminal gangs responsible for drug trafficking and supply, a zero-tolerance approach to drugs in prison, and a continued focus on rolling up county lines, building on the success of our efforts to date. And he had this to say about uh, cracking down on drug crime. 
County lines phenomenon is one of the most pernicious forms of criminality to emerge in recent years. That's why we wrapped up activity to dismantle the business model behind this threat. Since that program was launched just over two years ago, we've seen a closure of more than 1,500 county lines with over 7,400 arrests and importantly, more than 4,000 vulnerable, often young people, have been rescued and safeguarded. These results speak for themselves, but we will not stop there. By investing £300 million in throttling the drug supply chain over the next three years, we will take a significant stride towards delivering the objectives of our beating crime plan and levelling up agenda. Mr Deputy Speaker, tough enforcement action must be coupled with a renewed focus on breaking the cycle of drug addiction. That is why we're investing an additional £780 million in creating a world-class treatment and recovery system. This is the largest ever single increase in treatment and recovery investment, and the public will expect to see results, and so do we. That's Kit Malthouse in the Commons just in the past few minutes. It's important we heard that. It's the first uh, on-the-record explanation of what's happening. Andy, what are your initial observations on what you've been hearing there? Yeah, so I uh, really welcome uh, the funding for drugs treatment because one of the things that uh, that we talk about is the fact that drugs uh, is as much a health issue as anything else. As I mentioned earlier, you know, four and a half thousand deaths in England and Wales, uh, and people need help and assistance. So I really, really welcome that. I think that's great. I think the problem with the other half, because this is kind of a game of two halves. And the criminal justice aspect of this, uh, I note he said they're throttling the drug supply. Uh, he's really whistling in the wind. Uh, he sounded like Richard Nixon uh, in the early 70s when he started the drugs war. Uh, and their, their penalties were incredibly severe. But because, as a, a previous caller mentioned, this is something like a trillion dollar industry. The financial incentives are so massive worldwide, uh, that there is no way that we will throttle the drug supply. We can continue to chip away, as we've done for over 50 years, uh, but that actually, won't, I, can, I guarantee that that won't stop it. I don't think really many people who understand this would actually accept that that would throttle the supply. It's whistling in the wind. And so I think we need uh, a, 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 a very, very different approach. Andy, thank you. Andy Cowan, campaigner for anyone's child.